it, it, it abounds with uh, pop culture references. So is that something that um, that you're particularly interested in? Uh, is, is there any sort of fascination that comes from you with the, with the whole pop culture um, references that that abound? Well, I think everything. I mean, there's a lot of Shaun of the Dead references, for yeah. example. It's my favourite zombie movie. And I think the whole thing about um, zombies is they are, you know, they're all about pop culture, especially Hollywood zombies. So you can't have a Hollywood film or a Hollywood or a or a novel or a, a graphic novel without at least nodding towards that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, the, the fight scenes in the book, because there's a lot of action in the book, there's a lot of um, gripping fight scenes, and they're quite sort of descriptive and uh, graphic. Does it come from any sort of, were you yourself part of a fight club at one stage, or did you do any training, or does it come from, from, from watching lots of films in the genre, or, or reading lots of literature on this? Where, 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 does, where does that all come from? Um, I actually review it, it's actually here today. <laughs> Except on that, and she, she said that um, she had a few problems with the fight scene. She said they were very anime-esque, and that's where it's from. It was definitely so she was very smart and she picked that up. Yeah. So yeah, and I've I'm, I'm got a big thing about ninjas. <laughs> ninjas. Uh, it definitely comes through. Yeah, so they were great fun to do. They meant to be over the top and fun. Um, apart from the main char character, uh, Lele, there are uh, a lot of other very rich characters in the book, uh, like, like, the, like Ginger and, and Ash and, and so on and all of those. Um, do you ever base other characters um, on yourself? Uh, people, uh, certain traits. Um, is there anyone here that perhaps might have been? <laughs> uh, I have in other books, but I've learned my lesson because I almost got sued. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I think a couple of the zombies are based on... Um, if you don't like. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I, I'm fine with my characters. I, 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 I like to kill my best friends often, but it's definitely, definitely one of my favorite things to do. Um, and so, um, were there any sort of uh, literary or otherwise uh, books that you read before that sort of inspired the writing of or helped in the writing of Dead Lab? Um, I think anyone who loves zombies has to read um, uh, Max Brooks' um, World War Z because that is the most brilliant zombie book ever written, I think. So, and then the, and um, it's, it's like first person accounts of the zombie apocalypse, beautifully detailed. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the book is actually, in fact, set in Cape Town. Uh, well, the whole book is in Cape Town, obviously, but around sort of what's it like, sort of walking around Canal Canal Walk, um, being in the dead land itself. Do you see it differently? Um, I actually find it more terrifying. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so someone to come out at you. Yeah, I, um, I think well, the other thing, the reason we set it in the shopping mall is because zombies are, when you think of zombie, zombie law, like George R. Romero, Dawn of the Dead, set in a shopping mall, all about consumerism, so that's why we set, set it here. So walking around here, yeah, I do. I am spotting, we have been spotting some zombies this morning. <laughs> well. <laughs> um, and uh, so the book sort of um, doesn't it's definitely set up for a sequel um, or, or for you know to be in a series, and um, I'm very look forward to reading it. Have you got any plans for the sequel? Have you started writing it? Um, yeah, we're about halfway through, and um, this time we see what happens to the rest of the country. So we're going to Joburg. Okay. Yeah. yeah because um, I was sort of wondering, it's sort of isolated from Cape Town, and wondering what could happen to the rest of it. Oh yeah, no, there's um. Nice is probably the most exciting place because it's um, the survivors there are, have started a new age cult, which is quite. They live up in the trees to avoid the zombies, and they're a bit terrifying. The Durbanites live out in a crash 747, and the people in Joburg are. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely going to look out for that. Um, and, and so um, the, the, the character of Lena really goes through um, sort of trials and tribulations and so, and, and so on, and certain physical uh, familial losses as well as, um, as sort of a sort of a love triangle that 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 pays itself throughout the book. I mean, you said you wrote it with your daughter, it was yeah. So are there any sort of her experiences that came to there, any of any of your own uh, love triangles or something to do with that? Well, um, the character in Harbour, who is one of the, the love interests, is actually based on uh, Laura Reed's brother, Harbour, who we actually, we both have a bit of a crush on. <laughs> We're working at Carquake Blue, so he's very much based on him. But um, otherwise, I mean, really, it's just unrequited love, I think. I think everyone's been through that. Have you been through that, Andy? 
the person who wants to talk about that question. <laughs> um, uh, uh, oh, I had a very good question that I was about to ask. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on to, a, to, to another one. Um, <laughs> um, so, so throughout the book, uh, I mean, I mean the, the, the high school is called um, Malema High School. Is that based anyone on, 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 on Julius? On, on his, or was that just an name that came to you? No, no, it's definitely um, based on, on him. I mean, there's also Mandela House, so I was wondering, like, they're basing it off the prominent inspirational figures, and then there's Malema High, which is quite a, in itself a travesty. Um, <laughs> was there any sort of link that you wanted to show there? Well, I think that um, even though there's a new society, so in the enclave there's, there's new rulers, there's a resurrectionist who are very right-wing, hardcore, they worship the zombies, um, but at the same time they're looking back to the past. So they, they are kind of, there is a mirror element to the past there. And, and you have a lot of people sort of grasping for the past. In, in certain different ways, in consumerism, in fact, and, and that they wear clothes from the past that, that aren't really allowed but happen anyway, and um, grasping at their own um, old religions even. Um, so sort of um, the message sort of being this like, um, even with the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> oh, and for the question that I actually did have, which is very, very good that I actually got there, was that many zombie books um, look at this, the zombie attack and see it as an apocalypse, the end of the world. You all look at it ten years after it, after the fact. Um, what process did you go through in constructing the world that you created? It was, um, well, first of all, you have to destroy a city. And that's very easy. That's just like, you know, crushing the tampon towers, blowing up the waterfront, you know, that, that, that's easy. But thinking about where the survivors were going to live, how they were going to not be affected, how were they were going to be protected, um, it was difficult to, because it's potential plot hole hell. So that was true. So did you sort of go about fixing the plot holes before plot holes? <laughs> before, before writing, or was it something you went about in the process of writing? Um, no, we, we, we really had to, to think long and hard. We did a very detailed synopsis, and then we wrote it, and then we found a gaping plot hole. So we had to do a full rewrite. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, still an interesting one? Yeah. Alright. Um, and the book does definitely have a sort of dark element to it, um, a sort of darker side. Um, is that by any light way related to anything that you read when you were growing up? Anything you wished you read when you were growing up? I, no, well, I, I read um, a lot of horror literature. I read a lot of post-apocalyptic literature. So anything where the world is destroyed and people get wiped out, it, I enjoy. I think it's a real wish fulfillment. Yeah, and also the, um, <laughs> at the moment, sort of vampires are, are, are all the rage. So well, vampires are lame. They are very lame. I mean, looking at half the copies on the table have vampire in the title or in the blurb. Um, so I think, I think the fact that you're doing zombies instead, zombies are way cooler than everyone else. Oh, thanks, Randy. So, I think I've asked pretty much all my questions. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to tell about the book, about future plans? I, I just really want to say a big thank uh -huh. you to everyone, A, who's come today, and also thanks to, um, obviously, Penguin for publishing it, and for um, you, Andy, your star. Yeah. And I want to thank everyone who was involved in making the trailer, because they literally made this on a budget of about five grand. There were 15 people involved, they all came together, um, amazing actors, the makeup is just incredible. And it's directed by Romero Sanchez, and um, I'm thankful to the sleepers for the music, for letting us use the, the music for it. So I think we could probably watch it one more time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.